Hey, what's up, guys? This is Alex from Xtrades, back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week. Last week in our video, we had some amazing setups. I mean, all five of them worked out really well. We had all calls that we were looking at. Every single setup did go to the upside pretty well. And I just love when that happens. I love that, you know, I'm able to find some quality things and share them with you. Obviously, every week isn't going to be you know, as good, but um, last week was just great. So I'm hoping that you know this week we'll have just as good of setups so you can continue to profit as well as myself. So before we get into the setups here, we're going to go into the economic calendar. If you didn't know, we do have a shortened trading week this week. I'm going to go ahead and change the impact here to a three-star impact. That way we can see the most important data sets. Then we'll get into the setups afterward. The Monday, we do have ISA manufacturing PMI. So this can definitely be a market mover looks like the consensus is 47.5 forecast 49 previous uh, 47.7 so we'll find out what that is uh, hopefully it can move the market give a little volatility maybe or at least you know give a little movement you know around the open tuesday we have the jolts job opening so this can definitely move the market i think it's pretty important that the labor market does go down a little bit to show us that you know inflation can come down and the fed is doing their job correctly and interest rates are starting to you know take a hit on the labor market that would be less inflationary. Wednesday, you have the balance of trade and ISM non-manufacturing PMI. Two can be market movers. The balance of trade, not so much. I haven't really seen this have too much of an effect on the market, but this one can. So we'll see that at 9 a.m. And Friday, of course, when the market is closed, uh, we do have the unemployment rate and the non-farm payrolls. I'm not sure how this is gonna go because really the market is open when we do have non-farm payroll data come out. So that should be interesting. Uh, obviously, I mean, the market's closed. Uh, maybe the futures will still be trading or something. And, you know, we can see you know, if there's a hit to the futures or if there's, you know, some upside or what. So that'll be interesting. But otherwise, Friday is closed. So we do have a shortened week this week. All right. And now that we got over the economic data, let's go into the setup. So we got five this week. Looking at four different call setups and then one potential put trade. But I mean, it just depends on how the sentiment is going to go. Volatility is kind of low. So market was pretty tight all the way up until friday i guess like the ranges intraday just weren't that good there's a lot of gap ups so we'll have to see but our first setup here we're looking at sofi so i'm not a big fan of you know stocks that are you know trading kind of low like this you know six dollars a share but i really like this breakout to the upside so ideally we're going to be looking for price target up to at least 637 that's that previous gap support uh, we need to see it get over that in order to get up to 697 next and then there's one more above that at 729 but i mean you know it's kind of a high price target so it just depends on how the market's going to move but this does look good at least up to 637 and if it heads up there you know it could probably see resistance about there you know curl down about there but we'll have to see otherwise the breakout looks good MACD is crossing to the upside. KDJ is also crossing to the upside. So you got the KDJ here, you got a nice signal. MACD is crossing up. You get that arrow right there signaling that it's crossed over to the upside. And you can see a red arrow over here indicating that you know it's crossing to the downside. And I have that set up, you know, just in case that you know it's kind of looking close and you don't exactly know if there was a confirmed signal. These little arrows kind of do confirm that, so that's all that is. The momentum's looking positive here. You have the over the 200 SMA and also over the 50 EMA as well, so that's good. So looking for a move up to 637, looking at calls. Next, we're going into JWN. This is Nordstrom, this is a, a retail trade. They have you know, retail stores, obviously they sell clothes and all that stuff, you know, department stores, etc. So before, this is looking a little bit oversold, right? It's pulling into 15, 53 support right here kind of broke it briefly but now it's starting to reclaim so obviously the bulls are pretty strong here don't want it to get under that support you know institutions wall street you know obviously they're coming in to scoop it at a discount bring it back over support now even with that you still do have a macd crossover to the upside so you got a fresh signal on that kdj is also positive so that looks good and the fact that you know this is all in the one day that usually speaks pretty good volume so higher time frames do give a way better insight than if you were to you know trade on like an hourly or you know intraday chart so this 50, 1553 reversal off support is looking pretty good i feel like we can see a move up to at least the 50 ema there's really not like any crazy resistance that i'm seeing there's one right here that's previous support that could act as resistance a little peak here at 2023 20, but either way since there's really no like strong rejection area right here maybe you could say like 1750 I would look for that 50 EMA. The 50 EMA, you know, probably get up to about there, and, you know, probably try to reject off there. So that's why you can, you know, if you're not really seeing any crazy resistance or support or anything, you can use the moving averages. They work pretty well as 
you know, a, a decent area that you can look for a reversal on, you know, look for support, resistance, etc. Looking at calls on JWN. Next, we're going into plug power. So this is kind of another cheap stock. You know, we do have three here. I mean, we have three all under $20 here, which is interesting, but the setups look good. So, you know, can't really ignore it. I'm not really seeing too many large cap setups, like, you know, like the mega caps. Uh, obviously, most of the market caps on these are over a billion dollars. So, you know, that's that's good. JWN, Plug, and SoFi all, you know, have over a billion market cap. So I would say they're probably like medium caps. They're not the mega caps, you know, like Apple, you know, a lot of tech names and stuff like that. The Plug here, you do have a nice breakout to the upside. You can see this downtrend line's got a test one, a test two, you got a test three. Finally, on test three, you know, flushed to the downside, but now it's breaking out of that. Also reclaiming 1149 support. So you get the 1149 support here. And you can see the green arrow down here. You are getting a MACD cross signal to the upside. If you go up here, I mean, my MACD is up here. You can see it's starting, you know, the histogram starting to go back green. And you, you did get that positive crossover to the upside. Momentum starting to shift here. And the fact that it reclaimed that 1149 and closed over Friday, I really do like that. Price targets, probably looking at short term price target at 1239. And you can see that 1239 came from this low. And then there's a peak right here as well. So this is previous support turned into resistance. So that would be your first short-term price target. Probably get up there and try to reject about there, but it just depends. If it can get over that, obviously that'll take you to the 50 EMA. And your 50 EMA is right here. It's probably gonna be, you know, up in like the mid 13s or something like that. That's for plug, looking good for a potential pop here. This is a counter trend reversal play, just like JWN. And I feel like this could be a decent one. I feel like, you know, if I can get over that 1239, that's probably where the shorts would start covering pretty heavy. And you will see that move up to the 50 EMA. So it looks pretty good. Looking at calls unplug. Next, for another retail slash department store trade, we're looking at TGTs as a target. So that's a pretty clear setup. It's breaking out of this one day downtrend. Ideal price targets. I'm looking for probably this peak right here at 172.67. It's probably about as high as I could put it maximum. There's a short term peak right here too at 166.76. Then get over that, you definitely do have a move up to 172.67. See that the KDJ is positive. MACD also gave a buy signal all the way back here, but it did make a new low, but never crossed back down to the downside. So the MACD has held its you know positive momentum here. But the one thing you will want to see is get over that 166.76. You can probably just round that up to 167. TGT looking good here. Uh, ideally, you might see this run if you start you know seeing other retail trades go up like JWS. Uh, you can probably just look at like the, the retail ETF as well. If that can catch a bid, you know, you can probably start seeing, you know, moves in like WMT, TGT, you know, names like that. So yeah, it looks good here. Just maybe if you want to wait for confirmation for certainty, wait for that 167 to get taken out. That'll take you up to 172.67. TGT looking at calls. Next, we're going into Starbucks. So this is ticker symbol S books. So this one's a little bit different. Obviously, there is not a breakout here. It's pulling up in, into a rally based drop supply zone. So since you have that supply confluence in the downtrend line, ideally you could see a rejection here short term. Obviously, the MACD is still positive. KDJ is still positive. So momentum is still positive. It's also over the 200 SMA and the 50. So this would probably be a brief pullback. You could maybe see it down to as low as the demand zone. But we would probably need to see the VIX start ticking up a little bit more and you know the overall market breadth kind of getting weaker. Either way, uh, this does provide a setup for when it does break out too. So what we can do, we can add alert on the trend line and we'll just name it breakout. That way if it does break out, you do have a nice fresh breakout on SBOX that you can catch. But ideally, you would need to get over that supply to see more upside and that's going to be like 106. But right now, you're going to be looking for a rejection just because it's still at the downtrend line. And it's still below supply. So obviously that, that can give a nice rejection candle. And this can give a good short-term put trade. I'm not saying start entering put swings in this and hold for multiple days. But yeah, you want to see it get under, you know, those moving averages and you want to see the MACD start get, start getting negative. And then you know you probably get multi-week swings for puts. But right now this is just a short-term downtrend play. Obviously, you know, it could provide a pretty good setup at supply and the downtrend line. Maximum your price target is probably gonna be at demand zone the lowest maybe halfway of this bullish candle or something. So it's not gonna be like a huge a huge payout or anything if you're just day trading this. You know, there's a chance that it could, but with volatility so low, I wouldn't say it's gonna be like a huge dump at this line, if that makes any sense. So S-Bucks, I'm looking at puts, but I do have a alert set in case it wants to break out. And once it breaks out, you can start looking at calls. But ideal, ideally, once it, you know, starts breaking out, you would be buying inside supply. So it's a little bit risky. So wait for that 106 to get taken out. And that does give you free space up, you know, up to that 110. And, you know, that could come over a couple of weeks 
for you know however long it decides to take. The S bucks looking at puts with the exception for calls if it breaks out. All right, next we're going into the spy. So last week it was still trading under this downtrend line. The maximum I could put us was at this downtrend line just until we got the one day breakout. And you can see once they got the one day breakout, you got the candle close over it. Did rally for two days after that. Uh, we didn't really get a big day uh, from cash open to close until Friday. You can see these two little candles. I mean, it's very small range. And they were all both gap up days and we really went nowhere. But once, you know, you did get those two candle closes outside the downtrend, we did get that huge rebounds to the upside, probably just end of quarter rebalancing institutions, you know, trying to get those bonuses and et cetera, trying to bid up the market, you know, put have a good you know performance on paper. But either way, this week, I feel like it needs to get over that 410. 410 is going to come from this area. This is this was that November resistance. You have a strong 410 resistance here. It's going to need to get over that in order to get up to 418. We could also draw a supply zone here. It's a rally based drop supply. So obviously max PT I got if it breaks over 410 is just the 414. So I'd have to see how it reacts to supply up there. And the reason for that is because you don't know how it's going to react to supply. I mean, you could act as strong resistance. You could trade inside it for a little bit and get choppy. You, know, you will have to wait. I feel like if they can get over 410 is a good call trade short term up to the 414s. But otherwise, I mean, now that, you know, the breakout already happened, uh, you did miss, you know, a pretty good good breakout here if you haven't entered already and the reason last week why you know i couldn't put us any higher than the downtrend line was because i had to see that one day close like i was saying earlier and once you got the one day close you can see i mean really nice confirmation that's when people start to chase it higher so pretty much in short here just wait for that 410 49 break that'll take you up to 414 otherwise look for resistance maybe at 410 i personally would wait for resistance at the 414 supply it looks like a way better zone to They'll start looking for resistance. And obviously that's just gonna depend. I feel like, you know, since this is a shortened week, we might see a little bit less activity. Big data set, of course, on Friday. Uh, the market's not even open. So we'll have to see how the ISM manufacturing, you know, see how the other data sets do. But otherwise, I mean, we could just keep melting up here. VIX is pretty low. Uh, I feel like, you know, may, might have to get it to lower 18s before it starts to see a bounce. I guess it depends, you know, maybe if the banking system, you know, situation starts to, you know, light itself back on fire. Or, you know, maybe if there's some Fed comments, etc. But right now, everybody's kind of at peace, I guess, for now. And, you know, they, they're pretty much assuming that the Fed pretty much coming to the end of their rate hike cycle. And that could be you know, that pivot. That could be the light in the tunnel for everybody. And why you're starting to see this go higher, you start seeing you know, high beta names, tech stocks starting to bid up super high. I feel like the dollar correlation is starting to go back. So you got the dollar up a little bit, uh, futures down today. So the inverse correlation is back on track. Luckily, uh, it doesn't scream recession to me, so that's good. But either way, just wait for that 410 to get taken out if you do want to buy calls and you could ride that up to 414 or so. Next, we're looking at QQQ. So last week, we wanted you to wait until it took out that 313 or that 314 area, which is the top of supply. And you wanted to see a mega base in order to go higher. And that had your free space up to that 321.50. You can see instantly when we broke out of that level, it did exactly that in one day. So you basically had, you know, a small, small day right here, but then Friday, just that huge range day all the way up into the 321.51 resistance, which comes from that Jackson Hole supply, or, you know, the Jackson Hole peak from when Jerome Powell spoke at Jackson Hole. And now, I mean, I, I, we would need to get over that 321.50 to even get up to the you know, the 330s. Now, 330s is pretty much a top supply point. Um, if it can get over that, that's the highest I could put you. But right now, this is a short-term peak. So uh, honestly, that's probably why we're seeing a little bit of resistance in the in the NQ futures. So the NASDAQ futures were down a little bit, but nothing too significant. So this 321.51 will need to get broken over. Otherwise, you know, it could reject here and maybe just back test the, you know, previous supply or resistance. And try to make a base about there because i mean it did make a little base right here you can see the wick that means it pushed down and then pushed back up uh, you got the you know the lower shadow wick pushing up so, i mean it was kind of short term it's not like it took a couple days for this to consolidate and in order to go higher it was basically one back test and then it went higher so maybe it does pull back a little bit of tech here and try to make an actual base off previous resistance in order to go higher but either way it has to break that 321.50 to go higher in order to continue this bullish momentum and that could take you up to the 330s at this you know supply peak right here uh, macd is still in a positive signal obviously kdj just got a fresh a uh, little crossover to the upside so that's good but otherwise you know the futures are seeing a little bit of resistance so i mean obviously i wouldn't just start 
piling in the shorts yet. We would want to wait for it to get back under that 313 and then under that 304, and that's a good confirmation for puts. So right now, I mean, you would be trying to top tick it just because, you know, you are at this 321 peak. They're probably trying to wait for that to break out. Once that breaks out, that can take you up to 330s. So this is kind of just a waiting game here. You might be able to look at like scalps, you know, for puts at this area just because, you know, it is a pretty gnarly peak from, you know, previous days here but otherwise i mean really wanted to do shorts and you know look at like swing trades really wait for that you know 330 wait for us to get back under 313 then get under that 304 and then once you know that would really kind of change the narrative if it got under there but otherwise i mean i'd be waiting and adding on dips maybe wait for a 313 dip or something or you know, something around there in order to get a discount and then you can ride it back up to the 321 again if we were to get a dip. Otherwise, wait for that 321.51 to get taken out, and then you can ride it up to, you know, 330s. Obviously, that'd be insane. It could take a couple days or, you know, a couple weeks. That's for the QQQ, and, you know, trade safe on this one. It's coming up to a peak. All right, next, we're going into the IWM. So last week, we were focused on counter trend reversals. And what a counter trend reversal is, especially when it's pulling in a support, you're looking for upside because it's trading down. A lot of support here, you are going counter trend. It's going, you know, under the EMAs. It's got a downtrend line. So clear counter trend reversal. And it did exactly that. So pulled in the support, reclaimed 170.34, closed over it on Friday. I figured that would, you know, the fact that it reclaimed it, that would probably take us up to the supply, which was this area. It did exactly that. Now that it's, you know, pretty much reclaimed and hit the price target that I was looking for last week, obviously this week I can only put its maximum at the downtrend line and maybe this 200 SMA slash 50 EMA area. And you can see that meets right with each other. So that would probably be the maximum area I could see is. You can see it's clear in the top of supply. It's got a little close outside of it, so that's good. But otherwise, you, you will want to see it, you know, maybe make a base off the, you know, high high of supply, and that could take you up to the downtrend line, or, you know, it, it could just skip straight up and head up into the 200 SMA, the 50 EMA, and the downtrend line. So we'll have to see, but obviously, looking a little more, more bullish until it gets up there. Once it gets up there, you can probably start looking for rejections. You even do have a MACD signal here. It's crossed up to the upside. You see the green arrow here. You got the signal on Wednesday, but I closed. So the signal's been in a buy signal for two days now. So it could still be a little early. If you did want to trade up to the downtrend line, it's a pretty good trade. And then once it gets there, you know, maybe take some profits. Wait for it, see if it can break out. And then once it breaks out, you know, you can enter and start looking for you know, more upside. That's for the IWM. Just, you know, look for that downtrend line to get tested. Obviously, that's the maximum PT I can do for now. You can, once it gets up there, you can probably start looking for rejections too. And that will give you a good trade back down, you know, to the top of supply at about, you know, 178. But either way, can't really put you any higher than this just because you do have that strong confluence area. You want to trade up to that, perfect. But otherwise, once it get, gets up there, wait for that rejection or breakout. And that will give you a clear idea. That's where the IWM looking pretty good here. Next, we're going into the VIX. So last week, the VIX actually was in our video title, but the VIX was finally calming down, which it did. And that was due to that Friday candle right here. You see, it was just a strong rejection candle. And you can see that, you know, after you did get that strong rejection candle, I mean, every single day was a VIX decline since Monday. And the Monday especially, it was down 5.15%. So a huge sell-off in the VIX on Monday. And I feel like that's when, you know, algorithms and everybody is starting to say volatility is going down. The market's going to start melting higher. And now we're starting to get into an area where I start to get a little skeptical about longs. That's just because every time we've hit these areas, you can see each one I circled, it does start to bid up after that. So you do have to be really careful in this 1811 to, you know, 1634, 1706, all, you know, this pretty much this uh, 19 to 17 area. Very vulnerable to start reversing back up and you will see volatility tick back up. And when volatility ticks back up, it's usually trying to make a mean regression back to the 2022, 2023 average close. And that did drop from 2479, I believe, to 2470. So you did have a you know a little 0.09 drop last week. And that's because, I mean, it just violently sold off since Monday. So understandable why the average did come down and it was, you know, pretty far away from that. So that's going to have an effect on the number. This week, obviously, I mean, the maximum I can put the VIX at the 1811 mark i would need to see it get under that and then you know if it can get under that obviously that could take you down to 1706 otherwise i mean this is you know there's a support here support here that's the same 1811 and there's two violent spikes from that area you have a little spike right here from that you got another spike right here 
and that's all from the 1811 mark and there's you know four tests on it and you that you have that one test here uh with the lowest of 1706 so we'll have to see how it reacts to that otherwise i mean you know just you know be careful of this area i wouldn't just start piling into longs you know wait for dips or just buy tops and stuff you know because the vix is at a pretty vulnerable spot and at the same time you don't want to be shorting the top yet if you really want to start looking at puts for a swing you need to be going 30 to 60 days out that gives you plenty of time for the vix to you know screw around here you know make a base and eventually you know maybe pop back up and go up for a mean regression but for day trades uh volatility is too low to start day trading puts here but uh, maybe even you know day trading calls it just depends but this is in terms of the spy and the spx because the vix and the spy are you know correlated the vix is you know just priced from spx options you know out of the money calls and puts and it prices in 30 30 day volatility that's just for the spy i mean if you're gonna you know I've, i kind of started moving away from the spy this week I, I traded amd on friday instead and i had a pretty good trade right off the open i really love the trade right off the open and the spy off the open has just been total garbage i think that's because of the vix you know pretty getting at a pretty low level uh it's been good for you know call swing trades once it broke out but you know that's about it friday had a great day for you know if you're patient enough nice day trade but otherwise been really slow atr is kind of you know drying up a little bit i think the atr was like you know, maybe like a six dollar average move for 10 days uh one day we hit, we got you know as low as uh 250 so we only moved you know two dollars and fifty cents in a day compared to the six dollar atr uh, which is crazy so volatility is really contracted so you have to be careful with that otherwise just you know wait for this base to get made on 1811 if you really want to start looking at shorts i would not be day trading shorts yet uh, until you see a spike in the vix once you get a spike in the vix you know that that's a pretty good signal that you know volatility could be coming back at least short term and then you know that's a good signal to start looking at shorts but otherwise you know if you want to look at like i said if you want to look at swing trades 30 60 days out this is a great area to start looking at puts for cheap but also be cautious because you know once volatility gets super low you can start seeing that melt up so the main thing for bulls here if you really want to see like an actual like stock market melt up you want to see it you know start breaking out levels you probably wouldn't have even guessed it really needs to get under that 1706 that'd be a major volatility contraction that would you know be great honestly that'd be you know the market would be super slow obviously you probably have to move to more high beta names with volatility but that under that 1706 would be a, just a crazy mark and that would be the lowest you know it's been in a long time that could you know make the market pop off but otherwise i mean re really vulnerable spot here you know just because you got all these supports just be careful with that but like i said just watch the 1811 you know watch the 17s etc and that's for the vix next we're going to the dxy so last week i feel like it wasn't that great of an indicator just because you know stocks and uh, stocks in the dollar are starting to kind of move together which is very odd considering it you know all 2022 to 2023 it had an inverse correlation but now uh you see the dollar up a little bit the futures were down a little bit so that is a normal correlation friday it was up you know closed up 0.41 percent and the market closed up green so that's kind of a concern but right now you know it's back to the inverse correlation for the time being same thing applies this week you do want to see like multiple days of the inverse correlation coming back you want to see the dollar falling and stocks going up you want to see you know the dollar going up and stocks coming down and that'd be you know more of a thing that you know the market's working how it should i really don't like them moving up together because that does give false signals and makes a lot of people sketched out kind of gives you know that recessionary vibe to it and i don't like that Either way, for the technicals here, we're looking at 102.58, was the same level as last week. Pretty much not letting that go. And as well, you know, bounced off the back test of the downtrend line, uh, still holding the back test, also holding over the 10, 101.20s. Now, this is considered an elevated level until it's under, you know, the 101s or so. Once it gets under the 101s, you know, that, that could be good for stocks, depending if it gets that inverse correlation. But right now, for the dollar bulls if you want to see it go higher and stocks go lower you do need to get under that 103.44 if it gets under that 103.44 they could shoot back up to the 105 so same thing as last week the dollar really didn't move that much the so same outlook as last week really needs to get over that 103.44 uh, if you want to see it go lower obviously you just need to get under that 101.29 i'll even show you what the 101.29 comes from we can get rid of all this real quick so the 101.29 comes from this base you can see there's a base right here in may 2022 uh, held up right here so in order you know to go lower it would need to get under that and you know it could test you know the one week 200 sma or something around that but right now i mean it does have that one week macd cross to the upside you can see it gave a signal back here pull back right after that kind of shows you know the holes in the macd indicator but either way it's still holding the signal kdj is giving a different signal starting to point down so 
you are getting mixed signals here in the one week but overall you do have to you know pretty much assume that this level is elevated because it's over 101.29 still holding the same base and you know anything in 2022 is going to be considered you know pretty much an elevated dollar you'd even count the covid peak as an elevated point as well and we've gone over the covid peak a bunch of times the covid peak is you know that 102.99 it gets rounded up to 103. so we can say confidently 103 to 101 or so is an elevated dollar and you know the dollar can go higher if, you know unless we get under that point but we'll need to see that in the future if you want to see the dollar lower otherwise you know the short-term levels like i said i think it was like 103.44 it needs to reclaim that and you know that'd be looking good you know if, if you were bullish on the dollar and you want to see stocks go lower otherwise you know still at a pretty much an inflection point here might need a little bit more data so that's the video guys i hope you guys enjoyed it make sure you like comment and subscribe to our extra youtube channel i love you guys i'm gonna go ahead and get this chopped up edited and sent out goodbye